Shabbos a little bit, the upcoming Prakim. So we're now on page um, we're on page 39. And in, and it, let's learn the Kitzer uh, 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 before Ois Vav. Kitzer. To Elis HaChinuch Vadrocha Hirak Kishabo B'Mesinus V'Nimus. The only time when education and uh, uh, guidance will be appropriate is when it comes with composure, composure and courtesy. The Yoifi Habitui, and it also includes uh, pleasant expressions. Bepizgomim Masimim, with appropriate expressions. You remember, we spoke a lot about that, so let us go on now, the Rebbe. Is continuing. Vov Tnai Shlishi. This is the third of his conditions that he suggests that the machanach must have before te- before educating. Hakoras hamachanach vaamadrich b'mehus hamachunach. The educator must know the essence of the educated of the student of the of, of the student. Hamudrich umatzavoi, and he adds this word: not only his mehus but also his matzav. In English, the word matzav means his situation, and we'll see what the Rebbe means with this in this context. Let's 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 study. The essence and the matzav and the situation of the educated one. There are two pillars, two very important pillars. That the idea of educating and and guidance with all of its hekif, with all of its um, with, with all that it entails, both in hekif and reicha means bro- in broadness and, and and circumference, meaning with in, in all of it, it with all that it entails. Nishan aleim says the Rebbe. This is what it, it relies, depends on them. The hekif, the environment, the culture, and everything else is the key to have a successful chinuch and adrocha, since. Ki ascholos ha chinuch v'adrocha hi betchias hazihom v'asoros harau. We've already established before that I, that I was saying, without saying those words, that the, the beginning of chinuch requires removing zihum. Zihum is like schmutz, ugly character. Vahasor esara, removing bad. Hagas, coarse, coarse grubkeit. Imkein, if so. If that's the beginning, eifo al hamachanech vahamadrech liyachet sima slave musuderes and therefore, it is so important for the educator to pay attention to or, to, cre- to to come up with a misuderes, a very organized limdoid heite mahusa machunach vamudrach. The the educator has to has to carefully. This is what he's saying. He has to carefully organize an approach that will will in. Include knowing the mahus, the essence of that student. And if he doesn't take that time to evaluate the mahus, the essence of that student, everything that will follow could be a big mistake. It's like building a building on a foundation that's weak, which will crumble. Meditazu, and so he calls this, this evaluation... He avoid the kosher ukveda yoser. It's a very difficult task. Ukveda yoser, a much more difficult. Mimididosa shel hamoyde hamoyde mohus talmidoi. It's more difficult evaluating the character of the individual, the very essential character, than evaluating the knowledge of a student and what you need to teach him or her. Uh, I, let's read what he says, and if, if I, and, and maybe I'll, I'll give some comment to that if it's not clear. Horav, why? What's the difference? Horav or Isik Bahiro, a teacher that's involved in teaching, instructing. The Chofitz Lahamed as Talmidai al Bosses Yedia, 
and he desires to place the student on a good base of knowledge Havana, Umuskolis, regarding concepts and ideas. He wants to teach him to understand and know information. He, he must evaluate the very essence of the Talmud's talents and his senses. Aleph, Bahamtso, in creativity. Is he strong in creativity? Is he not? Bez, Bahasbara, explanation. You know, there are plenty of people that are great in, with ideas, but they're poor in explaining. Bahasbara. Three, Bahisyashvus, literally meaning, literally meaning with it, with the idea settling in the person. You probably realize that Aleph, Bez, and Gimbal is are other words for Chachma, Bina, and Das. Chachma is Hamtsa, creativity. Bina is Hasbara, explanation. And Das is that part of the mind where something is, you focus and concentrate on something so it settles within you. So the Rebbe says that the, that the instructor needs to pinpoint if he wants to succeed in communicating information that the student will get and be able to understand and use. You need to know, is the student strong in Chochma Bina Das, in, in, the, in, in, in any of these three, in all three, in two of the three, etc. Because if you, if, you, if you give someone who is weak in Hasbara, weak in explanation, and you give him um, you know, too much explanation, it goes right over his head. And the same is true in Isis Yashva. So therefore, you have to evaluate what is the strength of this person's senses and talents and, and the way his brain works or her brain works. And that's the type of information that I'm going to give them. Now, of course, you, you're probably thinking, well, in the classroom, the teacher can't, you know, have 25 different, or 20 to five, 20 different, uh, what's it called, uh, modalities, modalities of, of, of teaching. It's just an impossibility. That's true. But the evaluation is important because then the teacher knows what to expect or not expect from a certain student. Like I told you. If a student is not good in taking written examinations, but better in oral, the, the teacher should do that. If you don't do it in front of everyone to make, you know, chilukim uh, differences, but take into consideration. And a good teacher is sensitive to these things and, and, and is keen on these things and finds ways and this uh, of implementing it in this way, the student who is, or let's say someone who is a very bright and very creative, Right, you put them in a classroom, and you're teaching, you know, uh, the basics, or, or to, you're teaching to the to the to the average level of the student. That student will get bored. No, so what do you do? So either you put them up a class, or you, or you, I don't know. You have to find a way of keeping that interest of that student. Otherwise, you lose the student. So this is this is this is a, a a prerequisite for a teacher. Okay? We're talking now, we're not talking now about an educator, a mashpia, we're talking about a teacher. Let's continue. The of Yuchal and when the teacher evaluates the student, then the teacher can with Sayyaba he can picture in his mind. That idea, that this particular student can get and receive. And the teacher chooses styles and manners of instruction. And then he will succeed with his teaching to this student. And this is very true. Because if you could tap in on the students, the way the student's brain works, right? And, the, and you feed them that information, you got them. And you got them lifelong. But if you miss that, you don't got him, and, and you know, or whatever. Yes, Moshe? Well, it's just it's challenging to do that 
when you've got at least 25 kids in the class. That's right. That's what you got to do before you go into the classroom. You, 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 you have to, you, the evaluation is not during the classroom. It's the week before, the night before, the month before. Who are your students? And you have to, he says, Moshe says in the beginning, this is Avoy the Kosher. I mean, he was talking about the Avoy the Kosher, difficult work job for the Mashpia, but even this, even this is Avoy the Kosher. Right? Even this is Avoy the Kosher. But, listen, again, if someone wants to be a Rebbe in a classroom or a teacher and just, you know, get a paycheck, this, you know, he's not, he's not doing this. But if you really want to be serious, and I, I'm convinced that there are teachers that take, before school begins, they look at every student, and they talk to other teachers and parents, whatever, and, and, and they evaluate. You know, I, I, I teach all of you, right? My wife sometimes here. Is here, here is, here is, and she says, oh, why, why are you saying this? Why are you doing this? I said, you don't know my students. I know them. <laughs> I know what they need. And, I, and it's a balancing act. But what, what do I mean I know them? It's not just because we're learning now, because I've thought about many times, you know, and, and so I, I, I create a picture which, which I thought about. So it takes hachana, it takes a lot of work, you know, and also experience. That's why an experienced teacher is, 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 is worth everything. Unfortunately, today, when, you know, if someone has a white beard, he's already over the hill, you'll get the young teachers. There's a whole trend in the education world. I, I, I don't know if he'll if it's this way in, in the secular education world, but it's definitely this way in the from world, in the yeshivas and girls' schools. Anyone that's, you know, of a certain age, regardless, is, is like considered... Eh, you know, I, I don't want to mention names, but you know, let's say Manus Friedman. I'm saying Manus Friedman is a very bright man, right? But he's been outshined by some younger uh, um, uh, Chabad speakers who have, A, they have a different style than his, and maybe that style people like better. Probably that's the reason they... But I'm just saying, you know, it, it's just like... by it's, it's a natural phenomenon. The truth is, look what the Rebbe Rashab did. Who did he hire as the two mashpiyim for Toim Chetmimim in 1897? Reb Hendel, an old man from the Tzemach Tzedek's time, and Reb Shmuel Greinem, another old man from the same time. And then he hired a third mashpiyim, Reb, uh, Reb Michal Beliner, Reb, they called him Reb Michal Der Alter, Reb Michal the old one, because he really was old, and he was blind. And, and there was a complaint, why are you bringing him into yeshiva, this old man? And the Rebbe said, just to look at this man will make a change in you, even if he doesn't teach a word. That's, got, that's lost today. There's no appreciation for looking at a man and saying, just being there. Another story. When the previous Rebbe came to Baltimore in 1930, 1929-30, I heard this from the son of the president of the Agudis Hasid Chabad. His name was Rabbi Patashnik. Uh, for years, his son, uh, Abba Patashnik, was the principal of TA in Baltimore. Okay. And his father, his father was the, the, the president from the early 1900s of Chabad, Gulis Chabad, in, in Baltimore. So when the Rebbe came, they, uh, uh, some of the other members came to the previous Rebbe and they said, you know, we have one of your students here from the yeshiva and one of your chassidim as a rabbi. His name is Rabbi Axelrad. Yes. Avram, I've been to his kever. Right. This man was like a tzaddik, okay? And a massive Talmud Chochem. And a nice... He was... Right? They complained. He doesn't speak English. Our youth are going away. I'm losing. You know, they're falling aside. We need a rabbi that speaks English. In addition to giving the Gemara Shir. And the Rebbe said to them, you don't know what you have. And if you, if you, if you learn to appreciate him and look at him and, 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 and somehow, you know, spend time with him, things will change. And he didn't give in to the Balabatim. The previous, they wanted to basically mean that either he should have another rabbi with him or replaced. I don't know exactly what they wanted, but, and the Rebbe said, no. This 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 is an art art, and today it's like it's like the young the young 
it's a, just a new style, and you can't fight the storm. The, the current is going a certain way, you know, so we have to, we have to include it. I would say that if, 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 the, if the yeshiva world and the educational system of, um, of uh, Frumkeit uh, would, would incorporate those people together with younger teachers, I think you can have a very good combination. Anyway, that's just an aside. Let's go back to the text. Asher Loizu we're on page 50, 39, two lines from the bottom, towards the end of the second, the second line from the bottom. Asher Loizu Bilvad, Asher Atal Magyeda, the Dvar Ali Buddha Buryoi. It, when the teacher evaluates a student and then communicates the right type of teaching to the student in addition to the fact that the student will know properly what's being taught, next page, 41, through this very organized instruction, the teacher will succeed because he's using a very disciplined, organized style in teaching the student that he will actually create an opening. He will further advance the talents and the senses of the Talmud that the Talmud will then be able, the student will then be able to think on his own. And this is something also that is not enough. I saw amongst my girls, some of my girls, you know, could re- memorize many things. But they didn't teach them in school how to think on their own. And talking about a learning. There's one thing being a parakeet, being able to repeat what your teacher says. The other thing is to be able to take that information and then on your own figure out how, how to learn and what to learn and, and understand your learning. That's, that's, that's called... And Baruch Hashem, in Chassidus, we had this with Rabbi Yoel Khan, our Mashpia. He wasn't just a Mashpia teaching a mimer in a very deep, geschmack way. He opened our heads. He did, he did uh, what's it called? He did surgery on our brain. Where he taught us by making us think how to analyze something. And this is very nadir. This is very special and very important when you're teaching students. And also, what's the benefit of that? If you can accomplish that, then the student will want to study on their own. And you won't have to say, what are you doing in your free time? You're playing golf, eating popcorn, or watching movies. (laughs) They're interested in study because they now understand, their mind is working. Because you've opened their mind. You've shown them how to use their mind. Versus just teaching information and uh, repeating and even memorizing, the buck stops there, okay? I'm tired, I'm bored. But if the mind is working, i got to figure this out. So whether I'm tired or bored, I get to it. Um, um, let's continue next paragraph. Hamadida b'mohus hamachunach. This last paragraph was about a teacher, Moshe. Now he says, Yehudi, however, when we talk about evaluating the essence of the character of the educated one, he be it's totally different. Because here the primary evaluation is about the ugly character of Hagvoras Achaimer al Tsura and that by this person their material, their Homer, overpowers the Tsura, the form. In other words, the materialistic is overwhelming the spirituality. The Oimekashraosa, and it's so deep in the character of this person that this person is always seeking self. Self. I. It begins with I, it ends with I, and it, it's in the middle of the I. Of us, and, 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 and the mashpia, and the educator's job is to get rid of that I. Stop focusing on self. That's a much harder job. 
Why? Because the eye is associated with who the person is. So here the educator has to kind of tear out, remove a very essential aspect of this particular student. And when this mechanic evaluates the essence of the student, then he can I'm sorry. And when the mechanic removes the zihum, the ugliness, from the character, then he's able to succeed in being mashpia on him. So people ask, why, why isn't the hashpa of, 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 of an educator successful? You know what the answer is, according to what it says here? The answer is because the teacher hasn't evaluated properly the essence of that student. So whatever he did was on the wrong street, on the wrong road, on the wrong path. So he, he thought that his, his, his zihum, his disgust, his ugliness is a gaiva. And let's say it's not gaiva, it's taiva. Or he thought it was taiva and it's gaiva. But I got rid of gaiva. Thank you very much. This person's not suffering from gaiva. His real issue is taiva. So this is why the evaluation of character is much more severe and difficult and important than the evaluation of, educa- of, of knowledge. Because at the end of the day, with knowledge, Edison, right, it's a little more, a little less. Yeah, I mean, I, I said before, if you, if you evaluate inc- incorrectly a student, the student will be bored and go off to green past- to other pastures. But nevertheless, it's a matter of degree. Okay? Here, it's not a matter of degree. Here, it's whether you, whether you know this person, this student, or you don't know him. And if you don't know him, then his, his ugly character in that particular issue, his, his, his midara, will continue and get worse. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. If we think that by it being dormant and just letting it get, it doesn't get better. And this has been proven. Teenagers... Children, teenagers, the longer they, 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 they don't deal with their issues, it comes out later in life. It's so important to really identify and deal with those issues in youth. And if you work those issues out, you'll have, listen, you know, relatively speaking, as far as character, a nicer character, smooth sailing as far as that's concerned. You know, if other issues come up where Hashem throws you a curveball, that's, that's a different cheshman. That's chapter 26 in Tanya. You know, where Bonachayim is Zayin, if a person has issues with children and health and parnosa, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about our character or the student's character. Let's continue. Vihine midida zu, this evaluation that we're talking about, uh, uh, from the perspective of the educator, Eina must speak Adayim. It's not enough. Well, what if it's not enough? I'm spending all this time to evaluate the essence, the essential character. Eina must speak as Adayim. V'tzorich lisanyin, the educator must also interest himself gam b'matzovei shal ha-mechunuch v'hamudrech. Also in the situation. So again, he's going back to the word Matzavai, today it's a buzzword. What's the matzav? What's the matzav? Well, the situation. Liyos, and he hasn't yet explained what he means with it. I think it's next chapter or two, so you got to hold your pay. Hold on. Liyos, ki matzav v'hasviva. So here he adds the word sviva. The situation and the environment. Heim yesoidim ikriyem bechinuch v'adrach. They play a major role, Yoni, in educating. So Rebbe summarizes, only through recognizing these two things. One, Aleph, evaluating the essential essence of the person, the student. Beis, hisaninius, the word hisanya means to interest yourself, to interest yourself, bematsif, in the situation of the student. Well, no, inyan means topic, but, right? 
There's a, there's a word. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if that's the same. The the, the shorish lehisan lehisan gain. The 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 interest means lehisan gain. Does anyone know Hebrew well enough to say if they're associated inyan and hisan I'm not sure. Yeah, 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 because think about it. The inyan, right? It, it's um, the inyan means like some. It's it's in its form, meaning it's it's what's happening now. Litanyan is something that will be to, to discuss, to right? Discuss, to thought out, to look into. But no, lihisan lihisan yen means to interest yourself. Hisaninut means interest. Yaakov, what are you saying? To look into it. To look into it. Yen, yeah. To look into it. Yeah. Lihisan. I don't believe the meaning of the word lisanya means to look into it. Lisanya no, right, means. Right. In Hebrew, it does. It does. In modern okay, in modern Hebrew, but it's in 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 in, in traditional uh, Jewish literature, lisanya means to interest yourself. Yes, you understand. Right. Yeah. Yes. In grammar, in Hebrew grammar, the hey tip, the hit, is reflexive going on the person himself. Okay, and therefore, and therefore, and therefore, he's he's he, 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 he going into himself. He's interesting himself. Ah, ah. Okay, okay, let's go further. So the Rebbe says, the second idea is his haninyut b'matzav. And only through these two preconditions, prerequisites, yochla mechalech v'amadrich l'kavos l'tetsois toivos, he can then hope <laughs> the Rebbe doesn't use the word as a guarantee. He says he can hope that there'll be good results. Haseichla body next paragraph last paragraph Haseichla body the healthy mind Mareladas it um, it shows it 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 shows Ashakolp Nayodim Mishtavim Heim Keechod all human beings are are equal Sheheim Bali Gufa Nefesh they have bodies and souls Vyajeshem more so Asher Ef Sher Loi Meshi Yes you cannot say that there are virtues and deficiencies in the etzem hanefesh. This is classical Chabad. The etzem hanefesh of a Jew is perfecto. It's a diamond. The etzem, the essence. I don't care what he does on Yom Kippur. And I don't care how far he is or how corrupt he is. And Yom and I've discussed this, Right? the Jewish anti-Semites and all that idea. The Etzem HaNefesh is perfect. So the whole idea of Chesronos and Milos, which is deficiencies and virtues, doesn't apply to the Etzem HaNefesh. The Etzem HaNefesh is one thing. Good, great, holy. Let's continue. Shenemar, Shenemar. For, for if we were to say otherwise, we're going to say, uh, Avi, you know, this person's essence, his real essence is gewaldic, and this person's essence is really poor and bad. It's not so. It is not so. The etzim is pristine. Elo, here is the big Elo only. All souls in the very essence, Shlemis, are complete. They are on the side of the perfection of soul. What we could discern and distinguish, distinguish by, regarding souls, it's only when in matters and styles of revelation of Koychaseim, how they re- reveal themselves, how they come to be. Uvezewis chalkus. Oh, there you have a lot of differences. Whether they're young or old, over there you see a, ma- a vast difference. And <laughs> the fact is that in this world, what do we observe? The first thing we observe is the goof. So the first thing we judge is the goof. So I'm in shul davening a week ago, and someone comes in and has 
uh, braids that um, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I've never seen so many braids. So he looks to me like a nausea. But I couldn't say, I, I couldn't ask him, are you a nausea? Because I haven't seen a nausea in a long time. You only will remember when we were in Morristown, there was someone in Morristown called the nausea. I don't know, is he still alive? Is he alive, Yannison? Do you have any idea? Uh, no idea whatsoever. But you, re you remember the Nazir. You remember yeah, the Nazir. Yeah. 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 What, what does that mean? I mean, he, he took on he the made a, he, of the Nazirus? Yeah, he made an, an oath yeah. of the Nazirus not to drink wine, not to cut his ear. Absolutely. Kipshuta. Are you serious about it? I remember. It was, it was like, like a, I mean, the Gemara says, the Gemara Dunham says you shouldn't do that. But uh, the Taita, the Taita says there is such a thing. So a guy comes to show. Looks like a nazir. I see. What's the Shabbos? The Shabbos. You don't see too many like that. Wait, wait. He puts on his talis. He dabbles with kavana. I think he might have spoken a, a yoyli, uh, you know, Yiddish. I think. And and he puts away his tefillin. And I, I observe. The essence is the same. The manifestation is one guy has locks and one has ponytails and one has a bald head. It's all chitzonius. Now, when I say it's all chitzonius, I mean to say, you know, a person should 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 you know take into consideration. But 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 for whatever reason, whether he's a nazir or he just likes to have that type of hair, that that doesn't make his chitzonius. But what do I see first? What, what's the first thing that grabbed my eye? The, 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 the hair. That's the human condition. That it's, it's unfortunate. You know, and, and when you talk about a tzaddik, and maybe even a bainani, we talk about, that's the difference. We, ordinary people, the chitzainius, the superficiality, hits us first. The view of a tzaddik, a real tzaddik is otherwise. They see the neshama first. So when the Rebbe, when someone came to the Rebbe and, 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 and said about this or that, uh, uh, last night uh, they had a video, uh, uh, Iranian Jew, uh, uh, Herzl Aludian, the Chabad uh, rabbi of the, uh, the, of the Iranians in Los Angeles, brought um, a few uh, Iranian balabatim. And, one of the, and, and, he sa and he says, I'm a doctor. So the Rebbe says, you're a doctor. You should cure your patients. And... And then he gives him a dollar, and he, and he walks away. The Rebbe calls him back. It's very, he says, listen, I don't only mean you should cure your Jewish patients, but your non-Jewish patients too, because you took an oath, you have an obligation. <laughs> and I'm thinking about it. Like, and I could see on this doctor's face, you know, like, like, why are you telling me this? There must be a reason, which, you know, we don't know, but... The tzaddik sees the neshama. He doesn't look, oh, I'm a doctor, so if I'm a doctor, you know, A, B, C. He looks, he sees something to begin with. You understand? And this is a training. And we could, we could refine ourselves when we get to a point where we don't look at the person's chitzainius, his superficiality and external, we look at the neshama. So whether it be the story that Moshe shared, the um, Purim or whatever it was with the, with the Hebron that came in that was like shikr in the shul and he made a ruckus and all that and they wanted to eat him up and throw him out, you know? Yes, it's a shul, there's the Koram, but, you know, look deeper, look deeper. And it's, it, it, it takes a lot of avoida. You see, the first thing we're going to say is, He's wrong. They're wrong. And, and maybe in legal, in legal terms, they're wrong. You don't come into a shul and make this type of... But then there's a whole different level of Musr and Hasidus. Even Musr. You know, but Hasidus in particular is look at the etzim. Find the etzim. So the Rebbe here, in, in our context, leaves us, at the end of this paragraph, leaves us with the following. That... If you evaluate properly, I think this is what he's getting at. If you evaluate properly the mohus, the essence of the student, and number two, the matzav, the situation, you will then succeed in dealing with the person's issues. Because, A, you will look at the student as good 
excellent pristine, and that part that needs work is because of a situation, and you'll deal with it, but you won't have the anger, and you won't have the disgust, okay? And this has been proven hundreds of thousands of times where people, you know, they make changes in their life, and not just, you know, I'm talking about Paul Chu, but just, you know, it's, we're too quick to judge, <laughs> so even us who are already a little older and all that, we could we could we could work on this, you know, not to judge. It's 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 a big avoida. It's a it's a hard avoida, a very hard avoida. But it's avoida, and as long as Hashem gives us life, Baruch Hashem, He does. We have to work on not judging people. I saw this with my father-in-law. He was so not judgmental. He was like not human. And he had it in his in his DNA, you know. I, I don't, you know, because there are many other chassidim who are not that way. But you know, when, when, when it's possible, it's possible to come to a point where you don't judge, and um, that's it, you know. Tomorrow we'll learn the kids. Any questions, Chaver? Any you have any questions? A couple of comments. Yeah. I just want to say that the Hebrew that the, that the, that the, that the Rebbe Rayatz is using is, is, is amazing. And just we were talking about earlier the, the, the two things. Number in modern Hebrew, it's just interesting that uh, ha, ha, the hekef, like um, hekefo here, he writes, in modern Hebrew, one of the usages here in Israel is when you go to buy car insurance, you can buy also the second, like uh, optional insurance is called makif. They call it comprehensive in car insurance, makif. Like it covers yeah. all aspects of the actual car. <laughs> That's number one. And number two. That's good. Very two, good. Two, the word <laughs> zihum. Zihum. Yeah. In the modern Hebrew in Israel, is in, on a car, again, a car is the exhaust. Ha <laughs> ha! The exhaust, the exhaust of a person. They, they, they. <laughs> Very interesting. interesting. That's interesting. Interesting. Also, it's also infection. The same word. It's also infection. It what? Means what? Infection. Zihum means an infection. Infection. Yeah. Really? What's the connection yeah. between? In other words, it's not the essence of the person. It's their out. It's like uh, something is infected with. And an, and an infection makes you exhausted. Oh, <laughs> that's good. So, um, listen, tonight is uh, Pesach Sheini, and tomorrow, um, Chabad, we say Tachnun in the afternoon at Mincha, tomorrow we don't. When to eat the matzah, in different opinions, the uh, Holy Munkacher Rebbe, you know, um, I think he says we eat it, I think he says during the day, but some people do day, some do night, some do both, so get yourself some Shmura Matzah. And Pesach Sheini, of course, is the famous lesson, as is Nito Kein Farfalen, which means, Yiddish for English, there, it's never too late, as is Nito, there is no Farfalen, it's too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. So they should help that so, we should... So, yes? What? My, my, my wife is making, uh, is making us matzah bread because we eat kibrats and Pesach Sheni. <laughs> okay, make sure, you have your, make sure you have your four cups of wine too. I mean, with grape juice. <laughs> anyway, they should help that, uh, that um, we should share this message, especially with our grandchildren and, and friends and family and the youth. As an atoke farfalum. And, and really, not I just lip service. It's never too late. You didn't learn till now, you can start now. You didn't become, weren't a mensch till now, you can start today. You know what I'm saying? You get your act together because you can't get your act together from today. It's a new day. And every day is a new day. You, fo- you start and you, you start dieting and then you go back, start again. Whatever it is, you know. Have a great day, great cheers to everyone tomorrow, bright and early. Take care. Bye-bye.